In this lesson, we are going to discuss horizontal projectiles. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to define the terms involved in projectile motion and describe the horizontal and vertical motions of a projectile. Let us first define projectile motion. It is a two-dimensional motion influenced solely by gravity. By two-dimensional motion, we mean that the object following projectile motion is moving both horizontally and vertically. And in projectile motion, the only force acting on the object is gravity. Common examples of projectile motion are tossing of the bridal bouquet, playing ball sports like volleyball, and machines like catapult. Let us look at the terms involved in projectile motion. Suppose a ball is kicked by a person, that ball will follow projectile motion. In this case, the ball is what we call the projectile. A projectile is any object shot, projected, or launched in the air. The pathway which the ball followed is what we call the trajectory. The trajectory is the curve or parabolic path followed by a projectile. Next, we have range. The range or x component is the horizontal distance covered by a projectile. In other words, the range is the distance from the point of release up to the landing point. Lastly, we have height. The height or y component is the vertical distance covered by a projectile. Let us now focus this discussion on horizontal projectiles. Suppose a person kicked a ball horizontally on a cliff until it went to the sea. Zooming into the direction of the ball, we can see that the motion of the ball looked like this. Looking at some selected locations of the ball for a unit of time interval, we can see that the projectile followed a parabolic pathway or its trajectory. This pathway is a result of the directions followed by the ball's motion. First, the ball moved horizontally from left to right. And second, the ball moved vertically from the cliff to the sea level. Although the two directions of the projectile resulted to one trajectory or path, the two directions didn't affect each other. That means that, the horizontal and vertical motions of a projectile are independent of each other. Suppose we have the following data for the projectile shown on the previous part. We can see that the projectile had a horizontal velocity of 1 meter per second all throughout. That means that the projectiles have a constant horizontal velocity. On the other hand, we can see that the projectile had an increasing velocity. The negative sign here indicates that the projectile is moving downwards. If we compare each velocity, we can see that it is increasing by 9.8 meters per second. That means that the projectile have constant acceleration for the vertical component. This constant acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. With this information, we can now discuss how to calculate projectile motion. For this lesson, we are going to consider the two kinematic equations, particularly the displacement equation and the velocity equation. Let us first look at the x component. For the displacement equation, we have r is equal to the x0 plus initial velocity at x times time plus one half of the acceleration at x times time squared. We used small letter r to denote range. Since x0 is equal to zero, we can cancel it. And since the horizontal velocity is constant, acceleration is zero. Thus, multiplying it to one half and time squared, it would be zero. Therefore, for the range, we have r is equal to the initial velocity at x times t. For the velocity equation, we will also indicate the following components in relation to x. Thus, we have v sub x is equal to the initial velocity at x plus acceleration at x times t. Again, since we do not have acceleration at the x component, a sub x times t will be zero. Thus, we have v sub x is equal to the initial velocity at x. This velocity equation describes the constant velocity at the horizontal component. Let us now look at the y component. For the displacement equation, we have h is equal to h0 plus initial velocity at y times t plus one half of acceleration at y times t squared. We used h because the displacement covered in the y component is simply the height of the projectile. For horizontal projectiles, h0 is zero. However, when a projectile is not launched horizontally, the height of release is not always zero. Thus, we will not omit it. For acceleration at y, that is simply gravity. Thus, we have h is equal to h0 plus initial velocity at y times t plus one half of gravity times time squared. Lastly, for the velocity of the y component, we are going to write the velocity equation in terms of the y components. We have 
v sub y is equal to initial velocity at y plus acceleration at y times t. Again, since the acceleration along the y component is gravity, we can change it to g. Thus, we have v sub y is equal to initial velocity at y plus gravity times time. These four equations can now help us in solving problems involving horizontal projectiles. Although the x and y components are independent of each other, we can still compute for the resultant velocity of the projectile. It is given by v squared is equal to vx squared plus vy squared. Inspecting this formula, we know that this resembles the Pythagorean theorem which gives us the resultant value for the x and y components. To solve for an unknown component, we can manipulate the formula by isolating the unknown component and getting the square root of both sides. To summarize this lesson, let us go back to the following key points. An object following projectile motion is moving both horizontally and vertically. The horizontal and vertical motions of a projectile are independent of each other. Constant velocity and acceleration are experienced on the horizontal and vertical components respectively. And lastly, the displacement and velocity equations of the kinematic equations can be used in projectile motion. And that ends our discussion on horizontal projectiles.